Hello everyone and welcome to our next Wars of the Roses battle report. This is the second part in our ongoing mini campaign which is the Siege of Wingfield Castle. Um, Robin is back and he is taking control as always of the forces of the Duke of Suffolk which are all behind that rather imposing wall over there. I have the forces of the Neville family who are trying to get back John Neville who is inside that castle. The siege lines have now been drawn up. If you remember in the last game I had no siege lines, my army was just arriving and Robin managed to get some messengers away to go and get some help. Now it's only been about two weeks since that happened but the messengers haven't returned yet. Um, Suffolk doesn't actually know if they managed to get any help, um, but in the meantime he's seen that the siege lines have been drawn up, cannon have been brought forward, mantlets have been constructed, these are made by Robin and they are lovely, I'll have, a, I'll have a look from the other side in a minute. Also he can see men working to create siege works, he can see a camp and supplies being brought forward and up on the hill. He can see, this is going to be London, I think. That's one of Warwick's guns. Warwick has sent the Bombard London to uh, help get his baby brother back. And um, yeah, so basically, um, because the last game was won by Robin, the result on our sort of uh, family tree style um, game selector is sorty. So for this game... The forces of the Duke of Suffolk are basically sallying forth at dawn to try and surprise and destroy and basically harass uh, the Neville forces. Now, Robin has multiple objectives in this, but basically what they're trying to do is destroy siege engines, get rid of supplies, and potentially even steal some supplies for the castle. So there's a few special rules that I'll go through now. So Robin has six potential objectives. They are each of the cannons. There are one, two, three, and obviously the bombard, four cannons. There is this big stash of supplies up on the hill. And then there are these laborers who are busy making some siege works. As you can see, they've started to chop down the trees um, so that they can start making uh, basically entrenchments and breastworks um, so that people can move around without getting harassed by, uh, by the cannon up here. You need to name this cannon, I think. Lucky. Like you, lucky, all right. <laughs> I don't know which one of these Robin is gonna select as a primary objective. Robin is considered to have won the game if he destroys the cannon he selects as an objective or if he ends his turn in base-to-base -base contact with either the pile of supplies if he selects them or with the laborers if he selects them. There must be no enemy units nearby. Shaken units don't count. Now, as the forces of um, John Neville don't actually know that this is about to happen when robin comes out of the castle gate and robin will have the initiative we're going to roll to see if each of my units is suddenly stunned by the appearance of these men coming out and they will be disordered on the roll of a six also as it's a dawn raid for the first turn there is going to be an additional minus one to all shooting modifiers um, as the the dawn light isn't the greatest for firing however since the siege has started the cannons have done some damage to the walls now each of these sections of the castle is separate and all we've done is apply a stamina value to each one each section of wall has a stamina value of 15. Each tower has a stamina value of 20 and the doors have a stamina value of 10. When a cannon hits the wall, it does one damage to that stamina. Any unit that is on the wall has to take um, saves as normal. All the bonuses for fortifications count. However, um, the cannons are currently ranged in on the, uh, the castle. So in their first turn, the cannons cannot shoot at enemy units. The Bombard cannot move at all and is sighted on that side of the castle. Um, the only way it can shoot at units is if they're stupid enough to stand in its corridor of fire. When I was doing my initial deployment here, um, I managed to put my own men in the way. So that's something I've got to consider as well. As damage is done to the castle walls, we'll obviously keep note. We've managed to nail down now what we're going to do for force depletion to the defenders of the castle. 
For each enemy unit that is brought down to uh, routed, broken, destroyed, whatever, however you want to say it, Robin will lose half the force point of what is available to him next time. Effectively, that will reduce a standard unit to a small unit. We both have armies of nine force points on the table. It's just that half of mine is taken up with cannons. The bulk of the besieging army is, is way over the top of the hill, away um, in camp. Robin has six turns to complete his objective before the, the horns and the commotion wake the camp and his men race back to the castle. Now, one thing that's very important, um, and we can do this right now, the gates to the castle start open. So we'll just poke those open. Now, Robin has to decide when to close these gates. Too soon, and he may leave men trapped outside. Too late, and I could end up getting men inside. There are a couple of extra special rules for this game. If Robin gets into contact with any of these piles of supplies, you can see one here, any of these piles of supplies, not the main objectives ones, he can attempt to capture them. If a unit has um, some supplies at the end of the game, then um, there might be less chance of bad effects happening to people within the castle as they start to get things like dysentery and disease and just generally not afraid of what's going on. So to represent the fear of the troops, we're going to be rolling for every single unit in that castle and on a roll of a one, they start the game wavering. Wavering means that you have to take a break test the first time you take a casualty, not even if it's just a six, just the first casualty on the unit, you take a break test. So uh, it could be very debilitating it could do absolutely nothing but uh, we shall see so i'll run through the forces very very quickly so um in command of the neville forces is thomas neville the bastard of falkenberg he is a strategy rating eight commander with a plus two combat bonus and his special rule allows him to bring the calais veterans along however for this battle i've decided not to bring them because i'd rather have the marksman bonus from someone else rather than the drill bonus so we'll see how that's going to work out the other commander in the Neville forces is Sir John Conyers, uh, the uh, veteran of many a battle and a proper Warwick toady. He has a strategy rating of eight, a combat bonus of plus two. He allows one unit under his control to be marked as elite five plus, and also he gets to re-roll the first um, effect on the, uh, that he has to roll on the wound table, but he must always take the second result. In the Neville forces, the John Conyers is in command of a cannon, a unit of Bill and Bow that are behind some mantlets. Now the mantlets provide cover and make them obscured. Another unit of Bill and Bow that's behind cover. And he's in command of another unit of Bill and Bow that are in effectively reserve. The Bastard of Falkenberg is in command of two cannons, two unit, or one unit of Bill and Bow, one unit of Men at Arms, and the Bombard, which we're hoping is going to do lots and lots of damage. Um, over on Robin's side, we have the Duke of Suffolk. The Duke of Suffolk has a strategy rating of 8, a combat bonus of plus 2. And his special rule, as always, is that he is a loyal Yorkist, which lets him add the Elite 5 plus rule to one unit of his choice. Now... He has also decided to promote one of his lackeys, uh, Lord Burners, to uh, actually a command position. So there's going to be a bit more of a diverse command structure on the Suffolk side. And he has a strategy rating of 8, a combat bonus of plus 2. And his rule is that one of his units is drilled. And drilled basically means that they um, will always get one order even if they fail so robin can you take us through what you've got in your forces then all right so this blob does represent nine points um what we've got is small units of bowmen on the battlements and a full-size unit of bowmen basically in the tower from top to bottom yep um lucky the cannon lucky the cannon yeah that might up be, there might be a mistake hey, up there because they've obviously put it up there in parts so that's not coming down unless the uh, tower comes down small unit of hand gunners um obviously quite short range but you never know you, you never, never know. know and then down here we've got two units of light cavalry ready to sally out uh burners there, is, now it. there he is there he is the new commander freshly promoted with his well taking his god-given right to command i think is how he'd say <laughs> um then 
unit of men at arms, Suffolk's small unit of men at arms who realistically probably will stay in the castle with Suffolk. Oh, that's the unit that just chases my men around the board that normally, is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and then two units of Bill and Bow. Uh, sorry, a unit of just Billman and a unit of Bill and Bow. So Burner's command will be his original men because he'll probably be the one selling out. Yeah. Potentially, the, and the two light cavalry and the other Essex unit. And then <laughs> Suffolk will be in the castle, but keeping keeping Essex's cannon. It's, uh, we're, what we're hoping for is a Helm's Deep style Sally as <laughs> Feyoden like rides out, and then potentially there's a White Wizard to come and uh, come and save you. But we, we shall we shall see. View from the castle up here. You can see the uh, the mantlets. In the distance, um, it does look very, very cool. Uh, so these are the mantlets that Robin has made for this game. The gabions there have kindly given to me by Carl from Messrs Miniatures. Um, but look at these. I just love that he's made them all look different. So they do actually look like they're just chopping down trees and each each company within the uh, within these units is taking their time. They look fantastic. Uh, Robin is available for commissions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, here we go. So everything is all set. It's just one other rule. Basically, Suffolk's command range while he's in the castle can be measured from any point of the castle itself. So from the towers, the walls, not from the moats though. So from any point of those. With that said, I believe we are ready to go. So we will go into Suffolk turn one. They have the initiative. They sally out to the sound of trumpets and um, let's see how far they get. Okay, so, um, as we said, Robin can close the doors at the end of any of his orders phases. Now, this is important because I can go and threaten those as he's sallying out over here. Maybe if I can get some men over there, um, he might be forced to close them. Now, if he does close them, any of his units that are not past um, the siege line, so effectively they need to be on the other side of um, uh, these mantlets, here or past basically where the cannon is so you can see where the siege line runs basically um they will count as routed at the end of the game if they are not back past that meaning that he'll lose half a point of what he can bring next time if he does manage to capture some supplies he just has to end the game with one of his units the other side of the siege line so any units that are this side of the siege lines are absolutely fine any units that are this side of the siege lines are not it just means that robin has to get in and get out quickly um, and cause as much chaos as possible anyway let's crack on with turn one okay so that is the end of a very eventful suffolk turn one so just to give you the results of the disorder none of the Neville army was disordered. They were on guard. They were aware. They knew that there'd be some sneaky Suffolk plan uh, to come out. How very, very East Anglian of All them. The All the roosters going. Um, and um, over on Robin's side, only one of his units ended up wavering, which is the unit who are on guard on the gatehouse. And we've decided that simply because they can actually see um, the army that is laying siege. It's like, you can't see what we can see, lads. Yeah, you go for it. Um, so, Robin, talk us through what happened so an eventful non-eventful turn light cavalry first unit was trying to make a charge on the cannon and he got the one order off they just come out but at least it's under the cover of dawn slash darkness so at first should, light on the first day the first. at dawn look to the east yeah, they, mis they misjudged the distance <laughs> however uh, the I can't now. the other light unit of light cavalry steamed they, out they got a charge off yeah in, into the mantlets I failed all of my stand and shoot rolls, so they're straight in. So, uh, so early contact here. Now, for the mantlets, um, basically, they are attached to that unit. But if that unit is forced back um, as a result of combat and Robin decides to pursue or move over them, the mantlets are destroyed. That's um, sort of how we're calling it. Uh, the unit um, can't take the mantlets with them. All that happens during the siege is the mantlets slowly get closer and closer and closer. So, we need, so we've got quite a few things to keep track of in this 
game. We need to keep track of what's happened to the walls. We need to keep track of what's happened to Robin's units and how many mantlets and things have been destroyed. If none of the mantlets are destroyed, uh, I'll have to beg Robin to make some more for the next game. Um, otherwise, because there isn't an unending supply. Um, we're going to chop down all the wood around Wingfield Castle just to make as many mantlets. We could get really things. We could actually start, oh, this is yeah. worth, this, each one of these is a mantlet. <laughs> start resource management. I'm sure there's a supplement there, there somewhere. Um, anyway, so um, basically uh, we're into shooting, and I think the only thing that's going to be in range for your shooting is going to be your cannon. So what's old Lucky going to shoot at? Uh, technically has to fire at the closest target, but uh, deployed artillery never presents a clear target. I'm going to probably go for... You're go gonna, for the cannon in the field. You're going to go for the cannon in the field. Well, he's over half range, um, and uh, he's deployed to it. So he's going to be a six to hit. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hang on. Let me get the chart. Let me get the chart. So, because he's rolled a one, um, we get to roll on um, the disaster chart, the misfire chart for the cannons that we've written. Um, so, for this, on a roll of a one or a two, there's a catastrophic explosion. A three or four, there's cracks in the barrel. Or five to six, there is black powder. Black powder? Bad powder. There's already black powder. Go on, please roll a one. A two, catastrophic explosion. The cannon misfires and explodes. The crew are turned into a fine red mist and shrapnel and bits of cannon ear rain down on nearby men. <laughs> Remove the cannon as a casualty. All units within six inches become disordered on a roll of a six. Good roll for these guys here. I love that. That The first shot of the game. Come on, lads. No, uh, the wavering unit. No, uh, the handgunners. And I think there's just one unit down there, oh, isn't there? So, uh, the men at arms. No, they're not disordered. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> this is one more unit. I'm destroy my own castle. <laughs> no, so no one's disordered, but lucky, lucky the cannon, first shot of the game has blown up. Right, give us two seconds. Okay, so uh, that's where Robin's uh, cannon used to be. Um, so no cannon for Robin in the next game. I do feel that this was justified. Obviously, guys, if you haven't watched the preceding game to this, do go and watch it, but I don't want to spoil it. But Robin basically won it in a really... There's been some swings of luck. Swing, yeah, yeah, with uh, by, by blundering and then getting really lucky on a blunder. So I feel like this is a revenge. But I do like the idea that that cannon is, <laughs> is just fired to announce the attack and it just blows up. Um, so what we've just decided, for certainly this game, that to top of that, that tower is now completely uninhabitable. We need to roll some damage um, for um, the uh, the wall and uh, for the tower. Sorry, and we decided D6 damage. So you remember it's got 20 points, now minus one. Okay, so it's got 19 damage points left, that part of the castle. Um, so, okay, that wasn't as bad. Um, but what we will have to say is Robin might have to make some decisions about what he's got to repair. Um, so until he repairs that up there, he can't get men up in it. Men can still um, go in this part of the tower and they can obviously move through it but they can't occupy the top of it until it's been repaired oh that's um i feel really good about that you probably don't but um it's I a do. signal flare for any it's uh, a signal <laughs> flare any it's the, it's the, it's it's the, i've lit the bonfires is it the bonfire you, the gondor is it yeah. the gondor gondor calls for aid right we need to crack on um with some combat so we'll go into the close combat down here yes that was the summer boy shooting Okay, so it's hand-to-hand -hand combat. Robin's light cavalry smashing into this unit here that's led by Sir William Parr, uh, grandfather of Catherine Parr. Um, and Robin is going to be getting five dice, hitting on threes because he's charged. I'm going to get in six dice, hitting on fours. My bonus to uh, because the mantlets will come in on uh, my save. So, Robin, you've got five dice, hitting on threes. Uh, four hits. I have six dice. Hitting on fours. And that's four as well. Okay, I need uh, four saves of four. Normally it's five. But the mantlets. Uh, one casualty. You need four saves of six. Three casualties. Okay, so uh, you've lost the combat by two. So you're on a break test 2d6 minus two. Uh, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> they're, they're gone. They're out of there. Brave. I did describe them as kamikaze. Uh, are we, I mean, what's happened here? I think they're just terrified by the big explosion. Yeah, so the horses are back. The horses are in by the big combat. explosion the horses behind just bolted them. and ran off in the other direction. Well, okay. Fantastic. So uh, we need to make some notes. 
Okay, so that that was a bit of, that backfired a little bit for the Suffolk forces. Uh, clearly, this move was was anticipated by the wire wiry forces of the Nevilles. Um, so because that unit's been destroyed, Robin has lost half a point of what he can bring into the next game. And because that unit's been destroyed, he's it's lost half a point. It's only been my turn so far. It's only been your turn, and you've already <laughs> lost two units. This you is this done anything. I've somehow. It's I know. I it's I just paid. I clearly Warwick <laughs> paid for that to explode somehow. Um, that's fantastic. That is the end of Suffolk term one devastating. and it, devastating not, devastating to himself right um, so we'll go into Neville term one they can see that those gates are open um, could this sortie uh, result in um, it, well could I capture the castle let's find out Okay, so not a lot of movement um, from my side of things. Uh, basically, I tried to get John Conyers to order this unit of Bill and Bo down to give him some support for the men that are attacking him. That didn't come off, so uh, he was out of range to uh, get his reroll. Um, so they're just going to sit there and do some shooting. Over here, though, things are a little bit more successful. The bastard of Falkenberg has ordered James Harrington down to the hedge and Jeffrey Gate as well, maintaining a clear line of fire for the bombard. Um, and that was that's that's it. That's all I've done. So in terms of actual units, I've actually only got five units in, in term, you know fighting units on the battlefield everything else is artillery so again it's just nice to have a different kind of a game um where you know we can probably still have quite a big battle um so we're going to go into shooting now because it's dawn and because of the, <laughs> the surprise of the suffolk cannon blowing up um i'm hitting on sixes basically for everything um so we'll go for it now the cannon is trained on the castle not on the men um until next turn so um the cannon is going to fire at the tower that's exploded <laughs> so uh just for for this turn it's going to be hitting on a well it's gonna be hitting on a six anyway to be fair oh a six so he hits it and um it just does one damage to the walls it's just a small light cannon so we'll mark one damage off of there Next, this unit of Bill and Bow are going to be firing at this small unit of cavalry. Now, um, they are going to be hit on sixes, again, because it's over half range and because of the, the rule we're putting in for the dawn light. So, uh, we've already measured it. Um, I get three dice. I'm hitting on sixes. I get to re-roll one for the marksman rule. And, nope. And that unit are going to do exactly the same thing. So, I'm looking for sixes. Nope. Nope, none at all. Um, and now we're just going to have a lot of cannons firing. So this cannon is going to fire at the tap, the exploded tower as well. So it hits on a six. Nope, I need to put down some reload markers. The cannon in the field is going to fire at the section of wall that has the handgunners on it. So if I hit, hit it, the handgunners have to make some saves. Six, nope. And uh, the bombard. Uh, the bombard is... I need to check the rules for the bombard because I haven't used it for a year. Okay, so the Bombard is hitting on a 6 this turn, just because of the surprise factor. And no, so he produces 4 reload tokens. So the Bombard won't be firing again this turn. Well, he might not fire for a couple of turns. Um, but that is all of my shooting. So a very, very quick Neville turn. Everything is back to normal um, in the next Neville turn. So we'll now go to Suffolk turn 2. So as you can see, Lord Berners has uh, has come advancing out. Um, they've taken the loss of their uh, their cannon a bit personally, um, and they're pushing out. So Robin, do you want to talk us through what's happened? Um, light cavalry didn't quite make the charge. No, so you've so, uh, you stacked. Luckily, yeah. I'm just hoping that cannon doesn't reload. But on the plus side, you'd have to abandon your mantlets to charge them. So at least 
Yeah, that's that's very true. I've got to. Um, I can take a few shots. I just don't really want to get charged. No. And then everything else has just come streaming out the castle. So you've got Fitzwalter over here uh, with some. They're all billmen, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, all billmen. And then we've got a unit of men at arms, yep. Suffolk. Personal men at arms. Yeah, he's had to send them had out send in, them in out. support. And then a, just a unit of Bill and Bow. Bill and Bow. But you've also you've moved some men off of yeah. the walls up here. Yeah, down into the courtyard. Down into the so courtyard. they can potentially come up. Yeah, just the, to reposition. Into that tower. Or even out as support yeah. to get out. So, uh, so we've got this kind of like small force now and it's like pushing out. Um, it's just into the shooting phase. Um, just so you've this got one, Bill one and unit of yeah. Bill and Bow and you've got to fire at the closest target, yeah. which is them. So they don't present a clear target because they're in uh, they're obscured. So you don't have to shoot at them. You could fire at a cannon if you want. Um, it's up to you. Yeah, let's shoot the cannon because. Uh... Okay, well, you're definitely going to be over half range. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you're going to be over half range, and uh, you're shooting at um, artillery, and we use the black powder rule because it's deployed artillery. So you're going to be hitting on sixes. So three dice needing sixes to hit, you get to reroll one. There's a six. There's another one, and because you've got two sixes while needing sixes to hit, I need to take a break test. That's not good. Okay. Cannons have saviors of six. I'm in cover. And that's, oh yeah, that's what the gabions all count as around there. All the cannons are dug in and in cover. So saves of five. Both saved. Um, but I do need to take a break test. So uh, Robin, if you could get the break chest chart. Yep. Um, I, will, I will roll. So 2d6. Uh, a six. Okay, so the result of that. Uh, because artillery, there isn't a section for artillery, obviously, in the Hail Caesar book, and they're, they're not as um, sort of steadfast as infantry. So we've gone by Black Powder, which is that um, normally the unit would be destroyed, but we've decided, because it's what we do in these games, um, that basically the crew have abandoned the, the cannon, so the cannon can't shoot, and unless if Robin makes base-to-base -base contact with it, then the cannon will be destroyed and it won't be available to me next game, otherwise the crew will, um, it can be recrewed. But basically that cannon can't shoot now um all the crew have uh, have abandoned it so for all attempts and purposes um it can't fire um as i said before sometimes we because we're sort of adapting things as we go um we'll just have to go with that so that was actually really successful for you because uh, that's at least one cannon down a cannon for a cannon um but that's the end of your turn so it's now neville turn two Right, so um, a few things happened. So the cannon down here, importantly, has reloaded. So that will be getting some hail shot off on that unit that's uh, that's bearing down on it. So I really need to deal with them. Uh, both these units, I've t I just want them to stay in their place because they're protected by the mantlets. Um, and I don't want to do anything. I don't want to abandon my positions. I did try to move this unit down again, but they unfortunately failed. Uh, that cannon's obviously uh, not crewed anymore. Um, over here, the bombard managed to reload two of its reload tokens. So if I get a decent roll next time, it might be able to fire next turn. Um, over here, uh, this cannon reloaded and James Harrington and uh, Jeffrey Gate continued their advance down that flank there, but Jeffrey Gate moved through James Harrington's unit, disordering it in the process. Um, so we're into the uh, Neville shooting phase, and I think it would just be rude if we don't start with this cannon down here. Uh, so the cannon is going to fire at the horses. Um, it's at short range, so I'm going to get plus one to hit, and I'm using hail shot, so I'm going to get three dice. Yeah, they weren't bags of canisters. No, I tell a lie, it's two dice, but I'm still hitting on threes. Uh, that's one hit, and you need to take a break test. Uh, you need a single save of six, because um, that's all they've got as a save. And you need to take a break test. So you want not low. A six. I think they might be alright, because it's ranged. Uh, ooh. Give ground... No, Retreat Disordered. Retreat Disordered. Okay, so a 12-inch move and they are disordered. Okay, that's not terrible. Okay, so they've retreated over there. So next, this unit of uh, Bill and Bo are going to fire at Fitzwalter's unit. I think I'm out. Do you mind just checking? I think I'm outside of 12 inches for that shot. Yeah. 
Yep, so they're going to be at minus one. So I've got three dice and I'm hitting on fives. Rerolling one for Marksman. That's all misses. All misses. Um, this unit here under William Parr are going to fire against that Bill and Bow unit. Yep. Same. Also, okay, so they're hitting on fives as well. Rerolling one. Uh, one hit. One hit. You need a single save of five. No, first casualty of the game uh, is over on the Suffolk side. Or oh, I say first casualty, that is a casualty up there. I just <laughs> want to zoom in on that again, just because that makes me really happy. Um, so let's have a look at the cannon. So the only cannon that can fire is the one over here. Yep. Now that isn't sighted in anymore in the gun, so I can change um, that if I want. Uh, the only thing, it's got a 45 degree angle to shoot at, um, so it could shoot at this unit, but I'm actually going to carry on peppering uh, the wall. Um, so I'm going to fire at the uh, section of wall with the handgunners on it. Um, I'm not affected by all the, the dawn light stuff, so it's just over half range, so I'm hitting on a five. That's a six, so that is a that is a hit. So first of all, it does one damage to that section of wall, and they need to take a save. Yep, yeah, they saved absolutely fine, but they do need to take a break right. test because it's a hit from a cannon. Uh, six, I imagine it's going to be stand your ground. Uh, or hold ground disordered, or retreat and go. So I'll go disordered. You're going to go disordered, so yep. a bit of disorder on the walls as the cannonballs start striking. Fantastic. I just need to update the uh, the damage on the walls. Um, there is no hand-to-hand -hand combat. No other break tests are required. Uh, the bombard can't shoot, so uh, it's going well. I mean, basically, I've just got to keep robbing away. Um, so he may need to uh, to push forward. Um, we might see burners trying to do something clever now. Um, otherwise, there we go. We're now into the next Suffolk turn. Okay, the end of, uh, well, quite a successful turn of movement. Didn't manage to get any charges off, though, did you, Robin, this this time? But no. uh, Not for one time, but I like it how this horseshoe pushing is forward, yeah. pushing its way out. And actually, them being disordered might be a good thing, because now I've got troops in front of them. So yeah. maybe rather than having kamikaze units of light cavalry, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I can in engage them and then gallop them somewhere else to yeah. do something. Totally. So we've got... What moved here? You got a unit of billmen. Yeah, just move forward. They move forwards, moves, threatening the uh, them. Oh, I need to pop a reload, a reload marker yeah. on uh, on those. Uh, you also had a unit of men at arms yeah, move forward. Burns men at arms just get moved up, and then the bill and bow unit coming this way too. Yeah, they're they I don't Take like that bill and bow. They're looking at my cannon. A little bit funny. And uh, you've brought forward some more men now out of yeah, the castle as well. So unit of just to give some support. So it is looking quite interesting as these two. So next turn, I imagine there's going to be quite a bit of combat because they're in they're in initiative range to charge. Um, so there's going to be some combat coming, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I'd imagine anyway. Um, and my reserves really are only over here. So really, it's all going to be down to here. And if you break through, yeah, it's a thin line. It's a thin it's line. That bombard, through. which is your main objective, it isn't as well protected as it looks. Um, excellent. Okay, so we'll go into the shooting, which again means uh, it's only going to be the one unit, isn't it? It's going yeah, to be. This unit over here, and they're firing. You said they're going to shoot at, at my cannon. cannon. Okay, so uh, you're going to get three dice. Um, it's going to be sixes, sixes to hit again. Rerolling one. Hmm. One reroll. Break test at least. Nothing. No, no hits this turn. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> here we go. That's the end of the of the, uh, the Suffolk turn. Uh, we'll go into the Neville turn. The question is, am I going to abandon my defended positions to charge, or do I shoot and try and wither him down a little bit? Let's have a think.
Okay, so not a lot of movement from the Neville forces. I decided to hold my positions because I'll get a round of shooting. And then if he charges me, I'll get closing fire as well. So I'm, I want to try and wither him down. I mean, the main thing I'm actually trying to do is just cause casualties and break units. Because they, it means that the amount of forces he has available to him in the next game is less and less. But let's go through it. So over here, um, I attempted to reload my cannon. Uh, that failed. Um, I then failed to uh, move uh, this unit over here. So these guys all stayed stationary. So even if I wanted to do anything with them I couldn't um, over here um, managed to completely reload the bombard now in real life that bombard would probably taken about half a day to reload but in terms of a game that would be really really boring um, but I did get the reload tokens off of it so that'll be shooting this turn and I managed to reload that cannon as well so that'll be shooting this turn however the two units over there failed their tests so they didn't move so uh, yeah it's just gonna be a lot of shooting from my side um, hopefully um, inflicting some casualties getting ready to receive the charge next turn uh, so the cannon can't shoot so we'll start with this unit here uh, we know within, uh, within six inches from here to here because you'll be able to charge me next turn we've already measured that out so I'm gonna get three dice and I'm gonna be hitting on freeze uh, re-rolling one because of the short range well I'm re-rolling one because the marksman it's three plus because of the short range uh, that is three hits you need three saves of five no it's just five yeah one just the one save so two casualties okay next uh this unit is going to shoot this unit also um are they within six i think yeah they are aren't they because we measured that one out um so they're within six inches so they're going to shoot as well uh, remember it's measured from the fortification not from the, the people who are behind it so freeze oh two sixes re-roll that one uh so two saves of five oh no two saves three of saves. four because they're men at arms aren't they no two. Oh no three saves yeah three saves of four uh yeah. that's free uh you got um one. stubborn so yeah. you can reroll one no free casualties on that unit of uh, men at arms dice. these those are your cannon dice i think you need to swap out <laughs> okay break test 2d6 five from shooting a hold ground disordered or retreat in good i'm gonna retreat in good it's like no you've only just come out the castle come back Okay, I have no more shooting with Konya's men. Um, over on the other side, I'm going to start with shooting with the cannon. It's going to carry on peppering uh, the wall with the handgunners on it. Um, so I'm looking for a five to hit. Nope, it's a miss. There's a reload token down for, for him. Uh, and then the bombard. The bombard is going to fire at that... Uh, he's going to fire at the same section of the wall, actually, with the, uh, with the crossbowmen. Uh, not crossbowmen, sorry, the handgunners on it. Uh, so he gets one dice, and he's hitting on a five. Now, if I hit this, I'm going to do quite a lot of damage. Oh, yeah, so that's a hit. So first of all, um, it's uh, 1d6 damage to the wall. Two points of damage to the wall, which we'll mark down. Now, they have to save, but it's minus two for the bombard, but, but plus two because of the uh, the fortification. So it's basically even. So they're saving on uh, their handgunners, aren't they? Yes. Uh, so I think it's sixes. Yep, save is sixes. So one save of six, and you're taking a break test either way. So no, they've taken a casualty, and you need to take a break test because it's a uh, hit from a bombard. Nine. Yeah, I think they're going to be fine. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Okay, uh, so just one casualty. Okay, so that is it for my shooting. That's it for Neville turn three. Uh, we're going to go into Suffolk turn four, and I feel like we're going to see uh, a fair amount of combat now. I say that. Um, hopefully, if Robin rolls like he has been, we won't. Um, so anyway, let's get on with it. Suffolk turn four. Okay, so the end of a successful Suffolk turn. Yeah. I'd say it's successful, wasn't it? You've, you've managed to move... Got, got, got charge in. Um... Charge in here. So Fitzwalter's men have charged into John Constable's men. So they're fighting across the mantlet. So he's going to get a bonus to hit. I did kill uh, a couple of guys in on the charge. So he's at a, a sort of a disadvantage yeah. there with the number of casualties. Um, since he's under Suffolk's command, isn't he? And yeah. Suffolk's, and Suffolk's uh... men at arms. They just moved yeah. forward again. Threatening the cannon. Didn't quite... 
some uh, sneaky movement here from the uh, light cavalry uh, that, are, that are sort of snaking their way around. They're now thankfully out of view of the cannon, but these labourers are uh, a bit of a target. They're coming after Conyers to add to the collection of uh, <laughs> Warwick's leaders that I'm currently holding. Yeah, I'm currently capturing. Yeah, we need to have a chat about that, don't we? <laughs> uh, over here, uh, what happened? These are new. Well, funnily enough, standing on a large stationary object being shot at by a bombard, has encouraged them. Well, has encouraged them out of the. It, got when, him. it says something when coming out of the castle feels safer than being on the walls. I guess when there's cannon blowing up next to you and yeah, yeah, you feel safer you. outside. Take your chances. So, yeah, but an amazing out. role. You got three orders. Yeah, three so they're orders on their way out to support. Um, the bowmen again forming a line here, trying there. Try and see off there. You yeah, got so you moved over here, so you've actually quite, up, so. quite a big advance. And then this unit didn't quite get their charge no, off, they did they? Moved back to where they were. Moved Sorry. back to where they were. So a little face off here continues. So uh, we're first of all into shooting. shooting. So where would you like to start? So start with these. So we'll start with these bowmen if they're in. So they yeah, yep, they are. Yep, in range, they're so. in range, so they're going to fire at Jeffrey Gate. Yep. That's what okay, so they're at long range, which is minus one, um, and small it's a small unit, so you only get two dice. Rerolling one. Hit on fives. No, right, one. one hit. I need a single save of four because they're men at arms. Yep, saved. Twang. Okay. Uh, right, these bill and bow. Shoot the cannon. You get, you can, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, you within twelve inches? Yeah. No, sorry, twelve nine, isn't it? For it's eighteen inches the bows. About so. twenty four. Handguns are not eighteen. Yeah, twenty yeah. four. Yeah, twenty four. So Long bows are twenty four. Yeah, yeah that's what within twelve. Within twelve. Oh. Oh. oh, one hit. Um, oh. so that's a break. I say that is a break test. So one save of six. First of all, five. Sorry, because the fortifications. No, so that's a casualty, and so a. a Seven or more, and they stay. At seven or less, they run away. Right. They stay. They're fine. They're they fine. stay, they've just got a casualty. What is the stamina value of a cannon? Okay, so the cannon has a stamina of three. We're just going to put the, the chap here who's crying. We'll, ha we'll, we'll have him there. <laughs> Loud noises. Loud noises. There we go. Um, okay, so is that all you're shooting? No one in the walls is in range. No, they're not. That'll be... But no shooting down over here. No, um, just so just into fighting. So close combat here. So you have a unit of Billmen. Now, Billmen on their own still only get six attacks, but when they're fighting on their own like that, they've got the tough fighters rule. So you're going to get six attacks, hitting on freeze because you charged, re rolling one. That's, 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 that's not very good. One oh. hit. <laughs> I have six attacks going back, and I am hitting on fours. Rerolling none. Uh, that is four hits. You need four saves of five. No, four casualties. I need one save of four. Okay, so you've taken four casualties. Um, it's going to... Well, uh, no, minus four, minus because four. you lost the combat by four. But oh, you're gosh. also... Uh, you're shaken, so yeah, so uh, 2d6 minus 4. Uh, the result is 1, and um, I think they're gone. <laughs> yeah, not ideal. I don't, don't think that's... Not ideal. Not ideal. So Fitzwalter's unit has broken, so that's another half point off what Robin can bring into the next game. So that was actually quite unexpected. I, I didn't um, really see that going that way. So, the, so my line is holding, um, holding well. Um, and that's the end of your turn. No one is disordered, nothing to recover there. So uh, it's now the Neville turn. So Neville turn four. Um, I'm gonna see if I can start pushing him back towards that castle. Okay, so there we go. We uh, 
it's, it's, stuff happened for the Nevilles, but again, I'm see, I'm very, very tempted to leave my defences in charge. But now I remember that even though I'm the person besieging, Robin's trying to get past me, so it'd be silly. So there won't be any hand-to-hand -hand combat in this turn, but there will be some shooting. However, I failed to reload my cannon. I've kept my two units behind the mantlets. I think Robin's probably regretting making those now. <laughs> um, finally, this unit managed to move forward, so they they are now um, advancing. But um, so they're there to support um, and. They don't like the look of that unit of cavalry that's uh, threatening my diligent labor uh, force down here. Um, over here, the bombard reloaded one of its tokens. Um, the cannon reloaded everything, and uh, James Harrington and Jeffrey Gate uh, moved up. Uh, Jeffrey Gate got all the way across the hedge, uh, the hedge defense, and James Harrington moved in to uh, support him. So we're going to go straight into shooting, and I think we'll start over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is this unit is going to fire at the men at arms. Um, that's the unit of men at arms that causes me so many problems <laughs> normally. So uh, they're up there. Are they within six inches? Can you have a, have a check? So it's the center of my unit to any point of your unit. Are we just oh. out? No, they're within six. They're okay. So um, that's going to be three dice, and I'm hitting on threes, re-rolling one. Uh, it's going to be a break test. Two hits and a break test. Two saves of four, re-rolling one. Two no, two casualties and a break test. They're good. They're absolutely fine, but two casualties. Uh, next, uh, this unit are going to carry on harassing them. Uh, are they within six inches? So I'm not... Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, oh yeah, because you moved back, didn't you? So, okay. So three dice, hitting on threes, we're rolling one. Uh, that's two hits. That's three hits. No um, break to say. Saves of four. Hey. All saved. Okay. That was annoying. Um, oh, done again. Over there then. Um... Uh, my cannon is going to fire at, um, so it can see this unit here, can't it? Because so yeah, yeah. Um, it is going to fire at that unit. So um, you're not within six inches, so I'm not going to get plus one, but you're not over half range. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be hitting you on a four or more single dice. Oh, are you under, you're under half range, aren't you? Uh, range is, what's the range 36. of the cannon? 36. So you're within 18, aren't you? So they're going to get two dice. Yep. yep, two dice. So remember, if either one of these is a one, then it's a uh, impossible misfire. So yes, you get more dice as they get nearer, but the chances of something going wrong are higher. Like that. <laughs> okay, so let's see what happens to my cannon. A three. Um, I can't remember what a three is. Barrel, okay, yep, so that's right. Cracks in the barrel. The cannoneer has noticed a problem with the cannon barrel and orders his crew to cease fire as he inspects it. Place a reload marker next to the cannon. The cannon may not fire in the next turn or be reloaded. So it's it's not going to be shooting in turn five. Basically, um, I need to reload it in turn six. So we're going to put that on there. And um, we'll put a token down. Let's put a, I don't know, let's put that long one next to it. That will uh, remind us that it's... Uh, Basically, there's a guy having a bit of a look at it. Um, James Harrington's unit's going to fire at his unit at Bill and Bow. Um, but it's uh, actually got 45 degrees, so no, he can still see the unit. So, three dice. I'm not within six inches. I'm going to be hitting on fours, re rolling one. Oh, and a break test. Three saves of five. Oh, you're in cover. Four, and a break test. So, one, one save. save. So, two dead. Eight. And you're fine. Definitely some casualties mounting on um, on the Suffolk side. Um, I think, I think that's everything, isn't it? So there we go. It's uh, we're trying to just push the casualties. Um, I'm gonna have to deal with these cavalry though. Um, I have a feeling these labourers are gonna be uh, gone next turn. Um, but we will go into it now. Suffolk turn five. Okay, so this is the big Suffolk push. Um, Robin, why don't you talk us through it? <laughs> right. Burners, men at arms, charging in here. Yeah. Making the charge, shots bouncing off armor. Yeah, I got win. three hits and you got three saves, so yep. closing fire did nothing. Uh, over here, just hop the fence, 
to threaten the cannon a little bit more. You wanted to charge oh, it, really, didn't you? But cannon, yeah. Yeah, and then um, archers staying still. Staying still. Hang gunners. Yeah, amazing. Forwards. Yeah, that's just... not going to be good because the mantlet. Because so hang guns cap saves at five plus. So I'm not going to have the bonus of those mantlets. No. And if he causes a casualty, I need to take a break test or sorry, a hit. I need to take a break test. Yeah. Um, and then Suffolk's men at arms have charged yeah. that. The cannon. murder machine, as uh, they're referred to from the other gaming, uh, where they just ran around the whole board. Um, the only downside is my light cavalry decided is not to do Man, it they're waiting to see what can happen but what will be okay. interesting is if they destroy the cannon they can basically occupy that position yeah. and, and and go into combat so that's going to be very interesting yeah i think getting to the bombard is going to be um, it's going to be hard but oh, it's nothing yeah, to do you so, could pepper it with arrows yeah, I, I though think that's the shoot it a bit i don't think the cannon no. Obviously, the cavalry aren't going to make it. No, your your early losses of the cavalry were uh, were kind of hitting. But that's the view of what's going on on the table. Uh, so we will start with shooting. So who's shooting? Do you want to go with first, burners or Suffolk's? Uh, yeah, Suffolk's just this unit here. So we'll just do that because it's just. Is that dice. just shooting at Jeffrey Gate? Yeah, um, so you're not within six inches. He's not got two dice hitting on fours, re-rolling one. Okay, I have two saves of four, re-rolling one. Both saved. Okay. Uh, so that's the only shooting yep, from so Suffolk. He's going to shoot you the cannon. They're going to shoot the cannon. Okay. So, ah. Um, oh, no, he's, uh, he's from the center of this unit. Um, so you just need to see what's close to the cannon or, um, or, the, from, the, um, or the unit. So it's the center of your center of your unit to any point of Marvelous there. Yeah, it's going to be the unit. So it's going to be the unit. Okay, Harrington. so Harrington. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, right. So three dice hit, but you're in six inches. So uh, you're hitting on freeze. So all hits plus um, a plus a break test. So uh, I need saves of five, three dead, and a break test. Oh no! Shouldn't let me shoot the cannon. Oh no no no! <laughs> okay, yeah, they're gone. Yeah, they're gone. Ooh. Fantastic shooting. Okay, so James Harrington's unit has uh, just been peppered by Suffolk's men uh, and has fled the field. This game is, is really varied. We've got bl stuff blowing up on the castle. We've got your men surging out. There's actually it's been more combat in this really one. Brutal. Everything it takes break test is... It's gone. It's been, yeah. been very vicious. Very, very vicious. Uh, okay, so they're done. Um, uh, oh, handgunners. Handgunners. Were they within... Si were, was my unit... Oh, no, that's fine. They weren't in support. No, don't worry about it. Handgunners. Okay, so they're within six. So they're going to be uh, two dice hitting on freeze. Both hit. Uh, you cap my saves at five plus, so I need two saves of five. Uh, one save. That's one casualty. As I took a casualty, I uh, I have to take a break test. Uh, seven from shooting. shooting. That is all good. All good. Okay, so they maintain that their position. Been, uh, critical. Okay, so the one thing is, handgunners don't need to uh, don't need to reload. Um, any other shooting on no, the Suffolk side? No, because I'm still out of range oh. of your your yeah, walls. Yeah, uh, yeah no, you moved them off. No, that's that killer unit. They moved all the way yeah. down here. Right, so we're into combat. So we've got two combats to resolve. Which one do you want to go with first? Let's do Burner's Men at Arms. Burner's Men at Arms. Okay, so um, Burner's um, has um, an uh, seven um, dice going in on the Clash. Uh, needing freeze to hit, re-rolling one. I have six dice coming back, hitting on fours. So you have seven dice, hitting on freeze, re-rolling one. That's four hits. I have six dice, hitting on fours. Oh, uh, that's one. Okay, things seem to be going back to normal now in terms of the dice rolling. Uh, so you need one save of four. Rerolling because uh, you can get it. Oh. No, so you take one casualty. I need uh, what was it? Four, four saves. Four saves of four because of the uh, the mantlets. Uh, one. So I've lost. Uh, so I take three casualties. It means I've lost the combat by two. So I'm taking a break test. Two d six minus two. Oh, two on combat. Just uh, I think I'm gone. But yeah. do you want to just yeah. check for me? <laughs> just check for me. Uh, yeah. Break. Break. Oh, okay. So well, William Parr's unit is broken. So what do you want to do? Do you want to occupy I'll, that position and destroy the mantlets? Yeah, I'll occupy them. Okay, so we'll just get this sorted out. Robin's men will move to where mine are. I'll get rid of them. And those mantlets have been destroyed. Um, so the sortie, you're pushing the siege line back, actually. The sortie is uh, is going well now. 
Okay, so we're going to do this one here against the cannon. So uh, you get five dice on uh, your attack, so uh, and you charge, so you get five dice needing three or more. You get to reroll one for tough fires. I get one dice, one dice going back. Um, however, if he wins the combat, if the cannon basically has to take a break test, it's, it's gone. Um, so if he wins the combat, then uh, yeah, we don't even need to roll. The cannon's going to be going. So you're looking for freeze, rerolling one. Three, four hits. Uh, I'm looking for a four coming back. Oh, I still hit. So I need four saves of five because in the mantlet. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. Two. Just two. Uh, so I can't you win. Can't but, win the combat, but, but, you could... but I could have got a casualty. But you get to reroll that for uh, stubborn. No, I did cause a casualty on them, though. Um, I've lost the combat. I've got to take a break test. We'll just take it for sake. Five. But regardless, that cannon is gone. There we go. So that's long. Do you wish to occupy I'm that position? position yeah. So you're going to move into that position there. Uh, right. We've got a few things to resolve and we'll see what's going on. Okay. So um, Robin's unit has gotten to make a sweeping advance um, into um, basically the, my unit there. So I don't get closing fire. Um, Robin counts as charging. So he's going to get his five attacks again, re-rolling one miss. I'm, I can only put up to half my attacks coming back. Um, I think you get a bonus to... To hit, or do I get a minus? I think I get a minus to hit. Do I get a minus to hit for flank? Uh, yes. Yeah, minus one to hit. So I'm going to get three dice hitting on fives. You've got five dice hitting on threes. Rerolling one. Mm, that's not great. Well, one hit. I get three dice hitting on fives. No hits. Uh, so I need a single save of five, because the mantlets aren't going to count. Nope, so I've lost the combat by one, so I needed break test, 2d6 minus one. That's what three? What's three for yeah. hand to hand combat? I'm not shaken. Uh, give ground to go this, give ground disordered. Give ground disordered, okay. Uh, right, let's sort that out. That's, um, that's not good. <laughs> You've just pushed me out of my positions. You've pushed the siege ring right back. Okay, so he can't make a second sweeping advance, but he can just move as normal. He moved over John Conyers, who has been forced as a commander to go and join that disordered unit, um, which isn't great. Oh, I need to put a casualty on them. Forgot to do that. Um, so uh, that's not looking good, because I've got a unit here and a unit here. So he could threaten my commander quite badly. My unit commander is in that disordered unit. And now I've blocked the way for them to come in. So quite a lot to um, gain back. Robin has destroyed the siege ring. Um, he's destroyed, gone through the mantlets. Those ones are still in place. Um, but um, for the sake, you know, we're not going to sort of be picky about it. He's not the other side of those mantlets for the turn. He's pushed no my forces. Closer, There's no enemy closer than that. So there we are. There is the state of play. I am getting pushed back by uh, Suffolk. Seems to have pulled themselves together after their tower exploded. Let's just remind ourselves what that looks like. Um, right, we'll go into Neville turn five. Okay, so there we go. That's the end of the Neville Command, and things haven't gone quite according to plan. Um, over here, this disordered unit can't do anything, um, and I, you can't even rally a disordered unit um, if he's in there, so they're just going to hold their ground. I'm leaving Conyers in there to give them some support from what next turn is going to be um, some pretty rough charging. Um, over here, I wanted this unit to basically move into this uh, and occupy this area here so they could give some fire out with some cover, and they failed. Um, over here, the Bombard really loaded one token off of its uh, stash. Falkenberg moved back behind the line and I couldn't reload that. The only thing that's kind of gone positively is Jeffrey Gate is going to take his uh, merciless vengeance out on this small unit of bowmen who's going to push back into the moat. They failed all of their um, rolls to hit. So there we go. So we are into the shooting. Um, I have uh, no cannons to fire, but this small unit, even though they're disordered, can still fire. And I'm going to try and get rid of this unit of men at arms. So um, they're within six inches, which is plus one. I'm minus one because I'm disordered. So I'm going to get three dice hitting on fours, re-rolling one for marksman. 
Oh, that's bad. One hit, so you need one save or four. Uh, done it, bugger. Uh, Jeffrey Gate over here with his rough unit and men at arms is attacking those bowmen, so he's going to get seven dice on the charge, hitting on freeze. Um, I'm not sure what the what's the clash ability of a um, small unit of bowmen. Uh, one second. Okay, so I'm looking for freeze, re-rolling one for tough fighter. That's seven hits. Probably not winning this combat. Uh, you've got two dice coming back, looking for fours. Oh, two hits. Uh, so I need two saves of four. Rerolling one for stubborn. They're saved. Uh, you need seven saves of five. Just <laughs> angry men just pummeling. Just pummeling and beating into them the back into them. They're going to make a bridge to the wall. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> so you have lost the combat by five. Um, so your unit is now shaken. So your break test is 2d6 minus five. What's that? Uh, stamina's four, oh. so they're shaken. I was thinking they might be straight away. Uh... Uh, so minus so uh, eight minus four is four. What's four? In combat. In combat, a result of four. Yeah, break is shaken. Break is shaken. So yeah, they're they're gone. They're gone. Now he doesn't lose. Uh, oh no, you do lose half a point. Yes, yeah. of course you do. Um, and my men are very simply going to change formation. Robin, can you just turn them ninety degrees? Thank you very much. Brilliant. Okay, there we go. That's the end of Neville turn five. We're going to go into Robin's final turn um, and just see what he can pull off. Right, Robin, do you want to talk us through what just happened? It was a um, mixed bag, wasn't it? Yeah, there was potential for a lot of carnage. But, um, so Suffolk's men at arms, I think, finally out of puff. So they charged. charged uh, took, yeah, took one casualty they needed, was shaken, then uh, failed their charge. And their break test. Yeah. Still in good order, so... That's it. This holding dead. back a bit. See, the thing is, you really need that roll at the end of a turn to come up, don't you? Because yeah. you could then take, take out some of these labourers and... You know, to see what's going to happen. But they, yeah, so they're shaken and pushed back. Um, so the cavalry didn't get to do anything because of a blunder with the men at arms. They drifted left, but yeah, then that's not awful. It's not the end of the world. They just didn't quite get as far forward as other blunders. No. Um, um, and then this unit of Bill and Bow just moved forward, so they, they're going to shoot at the bombard. You're going to rain that's shots my, down on the bombard, aren't you? This is, this is your sort of all or nothing. So where's uh, Baron Burners then? He's decided it's time to go and take command of the repair works in the castle. <laughs> so so oversee what's going on. Oversee what's going on there. So he we're in... Decided that, no. <laughs> They've cleared the field enough. You have cleared the field as well, and you're pushing that back, but the men in the main camp are waking up, and uh, your sortie has been... I mean, you've taken out two guns? Two, one gun that's got no man's, yeah, one, one gun, gun destroyed, one gun's and, and then we're about to find out. So shooting, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the um, shots on the bomb? Or do you want to do these handguns? Hand start with the handgunners. So. Okay, firing at these guys. So, um, well, uh, you <laughs> you need, because uh, you're, you're going to be Most firing right. over that. Um, so they're partly obscured, so fives so you're going to need. No. No. Okay, yes. so that's absolutely fine. Um, so it comes down to this. Now, you're over half range. Yep. He's up on the hill, though, so he's not going to get the any kind of um, obscured target. Um, so you, uh, the Bombard doesn't get the same sort of protection as a normal little cannon does for being like a little target. The Bombard's pretty bloody big, and well, there's a lot of men around 20, it. 30 men around yep. it. So uh, you are hitting on fours. Over half range. Fives. Fives. Rerolling one. One hit, uh, I need a single save of six. Nope, so that's taken a casualty. Um, pop him down, I've got a, a nice little Burgundian handgun, uh, gunman there. Um, okay, so um, they've got a stamina of two, so he's all right at the minute. And um, so there's no hand-to-hand -hand combat. Brilliant, okay. So we'll go into Neville, turn six, and then find out what's going to happen.
Okay, so all of the Neville units did something. Uh, let's start over here. Um, the Bombard has reloaded everything. So it will get one final shot, and he's planning on turning those men into a big red smear across the landscape. Um, these guys reloaded. Um, after this, we're probably going to have to think of some rules about abandoning positions if uh, you've got like an artillery piece and no no one in support or something like that. Um, but we'll, we'll suss that out for future games. It's just, again, little things to think about. Um, over here, Jeffrey Gay executed an awesome charge all the way around here into the rear of this unit um, who can't do anything about it. The Vish unit have moved into here to occupy this zone and just give some fire and down here John Conyers has rallied John Constable's men um, not actually a rally order just in figuratively speaking and had them charge into that pesky unit of men at arms hoping to do some damage so we'll go to shooting first and the first thing i'm going to fire with is my little cannon it's going to shoot at the wall that it's been diligently pummeling so i just want to try and put some damage onto that um so it's over half range to so hitting on a five no he missed the wall um and um, oh, we'll pop a reload token on just in case we go to another turn. Um, down here, this unit in here are going to fire at that unit there. They're within six inches. So they are hitting on freeze, re-rolling one. Two hits, you need two saves of five. Ah, oh, damn. Okay, um, the bombard is going to fire at this unit here. Um, I'm under half range. Yep. Um, and um, although you, I have got to go through that hedge to do it, um, so um, I'm hitting on a five. Come on, yes! <laughs> so, um, you need a save of six, um, but you're taking a break test no matter what for the bombard with a minus two on it. No. Two, so one is very dead, and you're taking a break test, and the rules of the bombard are with a minus two modifier. Four from range. You're not shaken. I'm okay, if I'm not shaken. Uh, oh, retreat disordered. Retreat disordered. So you're just going to move back to that fence. Yep. Okay, and um, I believe that's all the shooting done. So we'll go into hand-to-hand -hand combat. We'll go with Jeffrey Gate first because his impressive charge um, deserves to sort of be resolved. So he gets seven dice um, and. He's charged, so he's hitting on freeze, and he gets to reroll one for tough fighters. That's uh, seven hits. Um, he did seven hits in his last one as well. You get, um, you can only put up to half your dice, um, rounding up, so you get to put four dice into this combat, um, and you're five. hitting on fives because you're fighting to your rear. Rerolling one, two. I need two saves of four, rerolling one. One dead, you need seven saves of four, re-rolling one. Uh, ooh. Five. Five. Puts me on... You've already taken... Four puts me on nine. Nine. Um, so you're not shattered, um, but you one lost four? the combat by four, so it's 2d6 minus four. Uh, yeah, they're gone. One's <laughs> yeah, they're, they're gone. Oh, Jeffrey Gate is definitely out for... <laughs> for blood um so robin's lost another unit again which just you know it, it's not a unit that he can't bring back into the next game some of the men flee into the castle they're not all chopped to pieces uh, but he can only he loses half a point of what he can field next game uh jeffrey gate is going to turn um just a very simple 90 degrees so he is now facing that unit oh the fence fell down of bill and bow um and i need one casualty i'll just take one of yours Okay, and then down here we have the combat. So, Robin, you're gonna get um, five dice, but you're gonna be hitting on fives because you're shaken, re rolling one. Yep. I am gonna get eight dice that's six dice for the Bill and Bone normally, and then two dice for John Conyers, and I'm re rolling nothing. So, I'm looking for freeze to hit. They're charged. Uh, one, two, three, four hits, and you need fives to hit, re rolling one. You need four saves of four, re-rolling one. So three casualties. And I need I need two saves of five. I've taken two casualties as well, but we've got to see if John Conyers is among sorry. If John Conyers is among those casualties. Um, so uh, Robin, you roll 2d6 and you add two, which is his combat bonus. 
no, John Collins is fine. That would have been really irritating. <laughs> uh, so, um, it's, uh, I did... Did two each. Did two each, then it is a drawn combat. Um, but you're you're already shaken, so you, so you lose. So you need to take a break test, yep. just unmodified. Eight. Okay. Imagine you're going to hold your ground. Okay, well, there we go. There is the end of the standard game. Robin, do you want to roll a d6? So see, four, five, or six. We carry on. We do. Into one more turn. Okay, so a very, very short Suffolk turn. Um, sum it up. I did nothing. Nothing moved. He, <laughs> it's not for want of trying. He just failed two command rolls. Um, so really, it's just into uh, your shooting. Uh, your handgunners can't fire at anybody because this unit is in combat and they've got no other target. Uh, so it's just this unit. Now, even though they're disordered, they can shoot. Now, remember, they fire to their front, so they don't have to select them as the nearest target. Because these guys are in cover, they don't present a clear target, so you don't have to select them. Same for that. So I assume you're going to fire at the bombard. Yeah. Okay, you only need to put one casualty on it. You you are minus one for being disordered and minus one for being over half range. So you're looking for sixes and you get to re-roll one. So because you need sixes, it's two sixes to yes. cause a break, break test. test. Unless you put a casualty on me, which will shake me. Oh, so you need one more. No. No, okay, oh. no problem. Um, and uh, it's just then re res uh, re resolving this combat. So I won the last round of combat. So, oh no, it was a draw. You yeah. are right. Oh no, was it? Yes. Yeah, you took, no, you took a break test. Yeah, but that's because I was, oh, yeah, I was yeah. shaken. Yes, so you're right. It was a draw. <laughs> Two casualties each, but I was yeah. shaken. Yeah, so uh, you get f five? five dice hitting on fours. Five, because I'm shaken. Five, sorry, because you're shaken. And I have eight dice hitting on fours. Yeah. There you get to reroll one. Mm, just the one. One hit. I'm looking for fours. Rerolling nothing. Uh, only three. So you need three saves of four. Rerolling one. So one casualty, one. and I need is it one, one, me? one yeah. save of five. No, so one casualty for me. But I'm still taking a break. But you're still taking a break test because you're shaken, but no modifiers. So two d six, seven. I think oh. that's just gonna. I like give ground in good order. Give ground in good order. That's probably what you wanted, actually, yes, to, yes. to be fair. Um, okay, we'll get everything moved, and then it will just be into the final Neville turn. Okay, so not a great deal, as you'd expect. I've decided to keep these guys here and just fire at them because I've only got to put one casualty on them as Robin puts out those mantlets are a very, very graciously blocking line of sight. Um, over here, um, my uh, Jeffrey Gate unit has charged into the flank of that unit. This unit, remember, are occupying this whole area, so they're just going to give some fire. So let's do some shooting. So the unit that's occupying the house is going to fire at these guys. Are they within 12 inches? They are, so three dice hitting on fours, re-rolling one. That's two hits, you need two saves of six for handgunners. Uh, it's two casualties, so they are now not shaken. Um, and then down here, we are within six inches, so I'm going to get plus one to hit. Um, so it's three dice hitting, I should have removed the bloody rallied them. Um, I'm hitting on threes, re-rolling one. Uh, oh. That's uh, three saves of four and a break test. Uh, so two yeah. dead. So it's a break test, I'm but because two. you're minus two now because you're two in excess of your um, stamina value. So two d six minus two. I imagine they're just retreating, or 
Uh, hold my ground disordered. Hold your ground disordered. Okay. I'm retreating good order because uh, I, don't know if, sense. I don't know if you can because oh, oh. I don't think you'd make it out yeah, past unit, are. but you're going to be fine. So, um, and then over here, Jeffrey Gate. He's done really well so far. Can he make it a, a third unit um, on his tally? So he gets seven dice. He's charged. Um, so he is hitting on three. We roll in one. Uh, six hits. You get uh, three dice coming back, and you're hit, you're disordered, five. so you're hitting on fives. One. Okay. So you you're behind. You are we are fighting over an obstacle, so it does count for you. So you uh, get plus one to your save. So you need six saves of four. So you only two. two. Oh, so, that does make me shaken though. So two, um, and then you scored just one hit on me, didn't yeah. you? Um, so single save of four. Rerolling for a fail. Nope, so you're taking a break test minus one. Uh, five, I imagine it's just retreat in disordered. Uh, hold your ground disorder, retreat in good order. Well, I retreat. You're retreating good order? Well, I assume I stay disordered, but yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. Across, so you'd just be going over the barrier, but... Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is actually it. That is uh, the end of the game. So we're going to have to have a top top this up a little bit. We might. <laughs> um, Robin hasn't succeeded in uh, getting rid of the bombard or that area of baggage. However, he has pushed and broken all my siege lines. Um, so we're going to have a, a quick chat, work out what's going on, and then we'll be back to you. Okay, so here we are at the end of the game. So as this is part of a mini campaign, obviously we have our little tree of where we're going next. Um, ultimately, Robin didn't uh, manage to hit the objectives. So the next scenario we're going to play is called The Traitor. Um, however, remember his messengers did still get off the board. So there should be some reinforcements on the way to uh, to assist him. Um, and uh, that will be handy because he's lost two full force points um, of troops so robin next game will only be deploying seven force points from suffolk's forces um robin has however basically wiped this side of the board clean of siege works and he didn't kill the laboring party but he's taken out that cannon um that cannon there is unmanned so that side of things over there will be still effectively in position next game and i dare say there'll be some other works nearby over here siege works won't have moved past that now because robin did destroy these siege works these units here we've decided and i guess i hope you guys agree they'll be able to retreat into the castle without a problem um it was only if the siege works were we never said if they were manned um those guys over there yeah. um according to what we said they'll probably be half a force point down so they will it's they will count so that's it they've got to get past jeffrey gate um so uh robin is going to have to decide so the way we've um envisioned this is um he can either try and repair the damage done to his walls or he can basically uh make the top of that tower habitable again but we will decide that at the start of his next game when we do the rolls um the good news for robin is only these cannons that are left on the board will be affecting his walls um next game so what we'll be doing is rolling at the start of the game see what damage they've done over the ensuing week but basically robin has added a whole load of time to the siege the horns are blown in the main camp over here and robin's men have retreated back into the castle leaving behind the dead and dying um, on the field however i do feel like now's the time to point out of course i do have the earl of essex <laughs> um with me because i captured him um back two games ago um baron burners who uh, is that chap there who has sort of been leading the sortie he is um the earl of essex's brother um so we've been having a chat and um but potentially feel like um i, th I think we're just going to even possibly make an example of the earl of essex but i'll tell you what i'm going to do i'm going to put it as a community vote on youtube and i'll put some options and uh basically based on the what's decided um i don't know maybe we'll let him go maybe we'll ransom him maybe he'll be uh, something horrible will happen to him in sight of the walls to uh, try and um in, you know instill fear in the defenders the main thing is is that i don't feel like robin's going to do anything to john neville uh big case his big brother no. comes along so um he's trying to hold out for uh, for some i was about to say hold out for a hero <laughs> um but um, he's going to hold out for some reinforcements robin how did you find the game brutal there was a lot of death there was yeah, a lot what? of death not even so much count. It was break tests. I, I think we passed a couple, but both sides just rolled. 
twos, threes, and fours. Well, your your turn was it your turn four or your turn five where you basically made your big push and my yeah. units, but this whole side of my board just dissolved. I mean, it didn't start well. It could only. Hear uh, when we, can we just remind ourselves why it didn't start? Sorry, I'm just going to keep keep that up there. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I think. Maybe I left units out a tiny bit too long, got a bit greedy because things started going my way, and I thought, oh, uh, you I'm, just needed I'm it. I'm just going to go around killing everything. You needed it to happen a turn I, or two earlier. Maybe I could have, yeah, yeah. Maybe I should have brought these back a bit sooner, rather than risk losing, risk losing there. But yeah, that was. Uh, well, it was the initial. I mean, you lost those two units really early at the start. Yeah, the Kamikaze thought, run by yeah, that. I thought, and, oh, I'm not going to do anything now. No, and well, I'll say three units again. You know, yeah, there was yeah. the explosion up there, um, but. Again, we, you know, using Hail Caesar um, and the adaptations that we're doing. Again, actually, guys, remember the link down is down below. If you want to access that, just click on it. It sends me a thing saying someone wants to access it, and I can just say yes, okay. Um, once we finish these siege games and um, and whatever comes afterwards, we'll be doing an update because there's a few situations we come into, especially in this game. Uh, that, blunders on cannons. Blunders on cannons if they're reloading um, or, you know, a cannon being closer to the enemy than it is a friend you know i think there's little little things like that that, that we need to um, need to address um but anyway we really really hope you enjoyed this game so stick with it the next one will be coming um so the next game going to be played is called the traitor um, but it might not go according to to plan for the neville forces and guys keep your eyes open for the, for the community vote on uh, what's going to happen to uh the earl of essex anyway guys take care of yourselves we'll see you all again soon in the next one